Welcome to the Gambling Outros. I'm Rob Bro. He's Kyle Jacobson. He's Money Mainville. Rocking and rolling here on a Sunday night as we do nearly on time tonight. 8.02, the starting time. I guess 8.06 is really the starting time. So we're four minutes early. Look at us. Look at us getting strong starting here. We also did an instant reaction there on Twitch. If you want to find the Twitch, go sign up on Patreon, patreon.com slash gambling gauchos. Get you in the Discord, get you some access to some extra podcasts, and otherwise, uh, we enjoy you also listening on this. If you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe, hit the like button. If you're listening on the Republic of Texas feed, welcome in there. The Republic of Football feed, sorry. Republic of Football on Dave Campbell's Texas football. All right, let's ride. We are going to do a lot of things tonight. We're going to do some initial reactions to the bracket. We'll talk about Texas Tech's draw and more across the Big 12. The Big East was snubbed, allegedly. Oklahoma, Kansas State sitting at home where they deserve to be. Uh, Kansas State in the NIT, allegedly, already. And I guess we'll see if Oklahoma accepts a bid. I've not seen them yet accept a bid. Uh, initial thoughts, money on the NC State draw and the bracket. Yeah, I think this is obviously a team that garners a lot of attention because of what they just did in their conference tournament, obviously winning it all. Um, when I was watching them in the ACC tournament the other day, I was thinking like, man, NC State, this is kind of a fun watch. Might be rooting for them come March Madness, and then obviously you get them in the first round. So that's not the case anymore. Um, but a decent team with some really fun pieces. You can call them Tomorrowland because it's all about the DJs. Um, they've obviously got the big man down low, DJ Burns, um, who's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Kind of became a superstar over the past week with just how much he dominated in the in the tournament, and then DJ Horn who's an absolute bucket getter, um, looks like a March player. When you watch him, he feels like a March player, really good shot making, really good offensive player. And then their defense is analytically not great. Um, but with the limited tape that I've gotten to watch on them over the past two hours, very aggressive. They switch almost pretty much everything except for Burns um, for obvious reasons because you don't want to get him in a bind. Um, but other than that, they'll pretty much switch one through four. They'll run a full court press um, at times, pretty frequently, even. Um, and so it's an interesting matchup. I think I think it's a team that's pretty good. Um, you're you're favored right now. I think in Vegas, I think you're a five and a half point favorite. That's that's what it opened up as. And Kim Palm showing you as about a a four point favorite. Um, it's about sixty three percent implied win probability there. Um, but a decent team, obviously, for them to do what they just did against the likes of UNC, Duke, um, even Virginia, um, coming off a really good five-game stretch after skidding that back half of the season. So they got some momentum, but maybe they're a little bit tired. We'll see. Kyle, any thoughts on the uh, the draw? Yeah, if I told you all a week ago that we were going to play a – 17 and 14 NC State team in the first round. Do you have taken it or said, no, we'll see who else is an 11 seed and maybe go with them instead? I would have taken it. Money? Same answer? Probably so a week ago, yes. Yeah, you know, we talked a lot about Kansas and how they got so much benefit of the doubt for playing a hard schedule in November and then kind of doing nothing in February, March. Sort of the opposite with NC State. Like they put together their entire regular season resume and nobody thought that's an NCAA tournament team. And then one week in early March at a neutral site in an exhibition tournament, the different teams approach differently. And all of a sudden we're supposed to be scared. Um, we ran a poll on Twitter. Let me find the results here. It was not trending how I expected it to. Kind of gave people the option, like, was this a great draw for Texas Tech, a, a decent draw, kind of neutral, or is it a tough draw? 
Tough Draw alone has 48%, so almost a majority. And a lot of the replies are saying, yeah, this is going to be bad. What I don't understand is some people are replying like, well, if we're without Warren Washington or if we're without Darion Williams, well, if you're without those guys, you're without them. It doesn't impact who you're playing. Like you're with or without them, whether you get NC State or a different 11 seed. So that's certainly a worthy consideration, but it doesn't impact the draw itself, in my opinion. I don't know a ton about NC State. I can't sit here and tell you that I watched a ton of their games or anything. I'm familiar with the run they went on in the ACC tournament. Do you all know what their record is in games that weren't against quad four opponents this year? And this includes the ACC tournament run. It's one quad one, two, three. Uh, how many games is it? They they played 36 total. Nine were quad four, so 27. Right at 500? Money? Any guesses? I'll go 14 and 13. Y'all are really close. They went 13 and 14 in games that were not against quad four opponents. Texas Tech, for reference, just to compare apples to apples here, went 16 and 10. 15 quad one games. NC State played 11, 3 and 8 in those games. I would imagine, um, obviously, UNC on a neutral side would have been a quad one game. I don't know who else they beat, but probably, I don't, they might have gone into the ACC tournament without a quad one win. I don't know. Seems like they at least probably had multiple there. So, I mean, that, again, I look at that, I'm looking at the other 11 seeds. I haven't checked this before we got on the podcast. So, New Mexico is an 11. They are, let me see here. Let me do some math. They're 14 and 8 against non-quad 4. Oregon is 17 and 11 against non-quad 4. Duquesne is 12 and 11 against non quad four. NC State 13 and 14. If you had blind resume, blind resume tested me, all the 11 seeds in the tournament, I said, which one do you want? I probably would have picked this one based on resume alone. Now, Duquesne's net is 80. NC State's is 63. Oregon's 59. There's some other stuff there. I mean, you can break it down. There's an argument on whether you would want NC State or Duquesne. But I don't get it. I don't get why we're supposed to be pissing down our leg at the thought of having to play NC State, other than they have some momentum. I'll leave you all with one other thought. The best team Texas Tech ever had that went to overtime of a national championship game lost to the last place seed in the Big 12 tournament the week before they went on their tournament run. So if momentum can allegedly work in your favor and springboard you a week later against a totally different opponent uh, that you haven't seen multiple times in the regular season already, Okay, but like Texas Tech, at least that one team, and it's anecdotal, but that one team in 2019 certainly proved that the regular season they put together wasn't some kind of fluke and that the Big 12 tournament result wasn't indicative of how they were about to perform in the NCAA tournament. So let's just have an honest conversation about if that can work for you, can it also work against you? And like how many one seeds that don't, one seeds, two seeds, three seeds that don't take their conference tournament that seriously? still go on to rattle off a Sweet 16, Elite 8, whatever. Like, I, I just don't – other than this one quick run they went on in an exhibition tournament, I'm not seeing what is supposed to scare us off about the Wolfpack. I think one of two things can happen with NC State here in the conversation of momentum. Either they've won five straight – by the way, you've won four out of five. Either they've won five straight in the NCAA tournament – in the ACC tournament, sorry – and that carries them through or they won five straight. They won the ACC tournament and that was their season and they pop champagne bottles and can't really move on from it. I think one of those two things happen. Now, will that be a tough game? Is it a tough matchup for Texas tech, especially with Warren Washington missing a bunch of time and allegedly coming back this weekend, Robert Jennings is playing better, but I do think DJ Burns is a bit of a mismatch. Uh, but yeah, I, I I'm not. Uh, I don't think you had a bad draw with NC State. Now, if you want to say 
moving forward, Kentucky, Marquette, that kind of stuff, all the way to the Elite Elite Eight is a tough draw. I, I can get behind that, but I don't think NC State is certainly a powerhouse. They're just hot, in my opinion. I think that's fair, and I think they've got a really good kind of core of players. Um, at least that's what I've picked up on. Obviously, DJ Burns, the shot, the shot is just incredible at his size. He can really play around the free throw line and then initiate the offense. DJ Horn, incredible shot maker. Casey Morsell, I think he's a really underrated part of their roster. Incredible on-ball defender. Um, I think he's a super senior at this point, been playing a lot of college ball. Um, so he's a really good piece. Um, Jaden Taylor, a good shot maker, but then kind of what else do you have? You've got Mohamed Giara down low. He's kind of their substitute big that kind of takes some of Burns minutes, but I do think a lot of the initial panic and the feeling of dread that's coming from tech fans is because of what they just did in their conference tournament which is fair. Like you've got to have some pieces. You've got to have some talent. You've got to have some things going for you to win five games in five days. But I also do think this is a team with some pretty clear weaknesses, like as good as they are in terms of, you know, protecting the basketball, kind of getting the ball to Burns running through him. They're still not that efficient offensively. They're not great at making shots anywhere on the floor unless the ball is in Horn's hands. Their defense has kind of underperformed from what they look like, at least on film, and how aggressive they are. And so I think you've got to kind of take what they just did and compare it to their season at large um, because I think it would be fair to say they kind of underperformed this year with the pieces they have. And I think, you know, the past five games have kind of been a, a semblance of that. Got some questions in the comment section that I want to get to because I think they're good topics of conversation. But before that, by the way, I'm not trying to just like totally discredit NC State here. I am saying that I think the reaction from Tech fans is a little bit overboard and that I'm not sold that a five-day run outweighs the entire 30-game sample size that we saw before that. Not saying NC State can't win the game, nothing like that. But let's look at this five-day run. They play – they start with Louisville. Has Louisville been any good at basketball lately? Does anybody know? Uh, no, they fired their coach right after the game. Right. Okay, so they beat them by nine. They let them score 85 points. Away. Beat Syracuse. Syracuse's record isn't terrible. I don't know if Syracuse is any good. This is impressive. They beat Duke by five. 11th ranked Duke. Um, 10 days before that game at home, they lost to Duke by 15. Could that have been an example of a team that has their seed, their tournament position locked up? Maybe not going on. Maybe. Then they beat Virginia in overtime. Virginia last four in type squad. And then they beat North Carolina. They're arch rival by eight in the ACC tournament championship game. I think by this point, the Tar Heels are like, if we're playing for a NCAA tournament title, we're going to take it seriously. So I'm not going to try to take that angle. So like three quality teams in that five-game stretch, in my opinion. One of them went to overtime. One of them I'm not really buying because they lost to the same team by 15 at home 10 days prior. Like if they had just gone through some murderer's row and like beaten Baylor and then Kansas and then Iowa State and then Houston in the Big 12 tournament, I would be like, okay, they can clearly beat high-end teams. But that's not exactly what they did. So we'll see. Um, some questions in the in the comments. I'll, I'll work backwards here. Is how many guys do we have with NCAA tournament experience? How many do they have? I, I don't know for sure the exact numbers, but I do know that almost all the guys that Gas brought in from the portal seemed like he was being intentional about prioritizing postseason experience. So I think Chance McMillan played in one at Grand Canyon. Warren Washington, Devin Cambridge. We don't know if – well, we know Devin Cambridge isn't going to be playing – not sure about Washington. They both played in at least one NCAA tournament at Arizona State. Um, I don't know if Darion Williams and Nevada went to the tournament last year. But, yeah, like I think that was clearly something that you were prioritizing were guys that had some kind of experience there. NC State, I know, Money, you said they're like the 15th oldest team in terms of number of minutes played maybe. Not sure if that means any of them have played in the tournament or not. But I don't think you're weak there. Like some of your – some of the guys that came in under Adams, 
Um, maybe don't have that tournament experience like Lamar Washington, Pop Isaac, so second year guys. But I think a lot of the guys you brought in in the portal um, do have at least some tournament experience. Um, got some follow up comments from a NC State fan says they have three. Texas Tech fan says we have four. So maybe that's close to a wash. Garyon Williams played against Warren Washington last year and Devin Cambridge in the first four. Nevada lost that game. Awesome. And I believe NC State had one quad one win in the regular season, and that was at Clemson when they won by a point. I don't know, guys. I don't know if I'm buying it. Great run in the tournament, but... I think you've expressed that uh, fairly well here so far. They gave us a 32-game sample size. I mean, are we going to believe them or, or not? You are who your record is, as the saying goes. All right, let's uh, look around to the rest of the Big 12 a little bit. We'll start with the first four in and out. Oklahoma, part of the first four out, the first one out. Uh, Kansas State, sixth or seventh out, I guess. They're not on the graphic. Uh, Virginia in the ACC, one of the teams that NC State beat one of the last four in. Uh, people are saying, not me, people are saying that Virginia shouldn't be in and maybe an Oklahoma or Seton Hall should be in. Even a St. John's should be in. Uh, the Big East, people are saying, got snubbed. Um, I guess thoughts real quick on Oklahoma and Kansas State. Never expected Kansas State to be in. Yeah. Their entire case on Twitter were fans cherry picking data points that the committee has never said they prioritize. Um, Indiana State is the one that maybe surprises me. I think I saw that their net ranking of 29 is the highest ever to be excluded from the NCAA tournament. I feel a little bit justified asking money about why is OU on the eight line on bracket matrix? Why are they viewed as comfortably in? Because looking at their resume, I didn't really see it. I thought they should have been very firmly on the bubble. So, that, I mean, it's a surprise just because Bracket Matrix is usually pretty accurate, but it's not some miscarriage of justice, as our friend John Rothstein might say. Um, so, yeah, I, I never expected Kansas State to be in. That would have been a surprise to me. I thought OU was maybe like 50-50. I guess kind of a surprise, but I won't shed a tear for them. Yeah, I think it's funny because both those Big 12 teams that did not make it and we're supposedly close to making it being OU and Kansas State, they're both going to be kicking themselves about losing games to Texas Tech. Like, let's just be honest. OU had a chance to beat Tech at home, let it slide away. Kansas State and Texas Tech in a close one in Lubbock, the Joe Toussaint game um, with the travel, allegedly. Um, but those are kind of like the the key losses where both those teams had a big opportunity to add to their resume and they didn't. Um, but when I mistakenly was misreading a graphic the other week on the pod and said, Oh, you had a 1% chance at making the tournament. I guess I was right. Cause look at them right here sitting at home and in, in Norman, Oklahoma. I'm a little surprised too. The big East, I think only gets three bids and Seton Hall here, I mean, net 67, that doesn't scream slam dunk tournament bid. But to have a conference that's viewed that good with that much depth, only have three teams in, is a little bit surprising, um, especially when they're all seated really high. I think UConn won, Marquette two, Creighton three. So to have like nobody from four through play in when you're in a conference that good is a little bit strange. Yeah, and then you have the Mountain West Conference getting six bids. There's a conspiracy theory going around that the Mountain West is a CBS brand and the Big East is a Fox brand. And so they wanted their CBS teams in there. I don't, I don't know that I'm subscribing to that, but I, I have seen that floated. All right, let's look around to the rest of the Big 12 teams in the East region. BYU is a six. Uh, what do you think about BYU's draw here with Duquesne? and then potentially Illinois in a round two matchup. I thought BYU should have been higher. I mean, there was some hand rigging on why they were on the five line and a lot of projections, but their net was 12. And I know net isn't the end-all be-all, but it is, I think, the primary metric that the committee looks at. I think you could have justified putting them as a four 
Um, I guess we'll get to this later, but Gonzaga five to me is an absolute joke. They seems like they kind of took BYU's spot. And BYU could have been playing in Salt Lake City. That would have been really cool for their fan base. The fan base travels well. I mean, I'm sure they'll be well represented wherever they play, but that would have been really special. I think BYU has a shot to go on a little bit of a run. I mean, they're a they're a kind of a boomer bust team, in my opinion. But if if they're shooting the three ball well, we've seen what that can do. So I don't know much about Duquesne. I mean, I guess what I just laid out would tell you they're right there by NC State as far as one of the weaker 11 seeds. I think it's good that the sixes this year get to avoid the play-in. I, in my opinion, I don't want to play a team that just like already won a game in a play-in setting. Um, so, yeah, and then I guess they'll get TJ Shannon in round two if they win. I'm really excited for a BYU-Illinois matchup. Uh, Money, we also have Iowa State in the East there at the bottom, so potentially a BYU-Iowa State matchup uh, on in weekend two. Uh, they start with South Dakota State and then potentially a Washington State or Drake matchup in the second round. I think we're pretty high on Iowa State getting hot in the tournament, uh, especially after their Big 12 tournament run, even though we don't care about NC State's tournament run. Uh, what do we think about Iowa State and their path here? potentially to Illinois there in the Sweet 16 and then beyond. Yeah, I think if it plays out this way, which I imagine it will, Iowa State-Washington State is going to be a hell of a game because Washington State is kind of like Iowa State light, like very much defensively led. They don't shoot the ball as well as Iowa State does. They don't have as many offensive pieces, but they're a really, really fun team. They're long. They're athletic. They play good defense. Um, they had a crazy stretch during the season where they won, I think it was like eight straight games. So I think that's a game I'm really looking forward to. Um, but Duquesne, I think LeBron James high school coaches is, is the head coach there now. So who knows, maybe some, uh, King James magic March madness. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that Iowa State Washington State game, assuming it happens, because I think that'll be a lot of fun. Well, let's go to the bottom side of this bracket in the West. Obviously, North Carolina, the one seed, but Big 12 world, you've got Baylor as the three. You open up with Colgate and then potentially a Patino matchup with New Mexico over Clemson. Uh, they're in the second round. What are we feeling? And future Big 12 team, Arizona as the two. Uh, what are we thinking about Baylor here? as the three seed. I think they've got one of the earlier tip offs that day. And uh, let's hope playing Colgate, they don't show up with morning breath. Um, Colgate actually has some experience in the NCAA tournament. I'm not, I, I'm probably not bold enough to predict a 14 over a three. Wouldn't shock me if that's a game at halftime, especially if the threes aren't falling for Baylor. So not a 14 to take lightly in my opinion. Uh, but otherwise, Baylor, I think, pretty promising track to an Elite Eight, if not more. I was going to show this later, but they have the uh, the Evan Maya Trapezoid of Excellence. Uh, the green, I wish I had a pointer, laser pointer here. The green trapezoid at the top, those are the teams with the best chance uh, of going far in the NCAA tournament. Iowa State, obviously Houston up there, Baylor, UConn, Duke, Creighton, those teams, Auburn, Purdue. Uh, but Iowa State and Baylor right here that we've talked about already, um, both in the trapezoid of excellence. So you might see Baylor make a run here. Can you find Tech or NC State on that graphic? Yeah, Texas Tech is um, – you know, I saw them earlier. I looked at them earlier. We'll go back to it when we get there. Okay. I think they're in the middle to the left. Okay, I don't see either one. But if you can give me some teams that they're nearby, I could probably find them. I'll have to figure that out when we get there. Are, are we behind Colorado State? Go back. Is that yeah, the where, top left corner of a double T? Time. That's where I saw them last time, right there, right, right underneath the trapezoid of excellence. Okay. And I, I don't see NC State, but it's kind of, it's kind of mungled. I it's wish tough. they, I wish you would put it out again with just the tournament teams. This is from a week or two ago, so. Gotcha. It was the last time you put it out. All right, let's go to the other side of the bracket. Houston, obviously, one seed in the south. Uh, Nebraska A&M might be my favorite first-round matchup. 
and it's in the women's and the men's tournament, which is even better. Uh, and then you have Texas Tech here in the sixth seed uh, here for the Big 12. Uh, Houston, like, pencil them into the Elite Eight, I think. Uh, and then Texas Tech, obviously, we'll talk about that run. Um, even beyond NC State, I know we need to take it one game at a time. But here for the bracket purposes, maybe look at Kentucky and even a Florida or Marquette matchup later on. Uh, but let's start with Houston. Uh, I mean, Longwood, I think that's a, a wash. And then Nebraska, Texas a and If Nebraska wins, it'll be their first win ever in the NCAA tournament. I think Houston has a pretty good path here. Yeah, I think Duke might have uh, – I think having good dudes can cancel out some of this, and Duke might be the only team with the horses necessary to – really be competitive with Houston. So, yeah, I'm with you, Rob. I think you kind of pencil them in at least for an Elite Eight. I mean, maybe Duke gives them some trouble, but we'll see. Um, at the bottom of the bracket, is this is this Shaka's time to shine? I feel like Florida's maybe not a stellar seven seed, and so, like, they've got a pretty good path there to the Sweet 16, and then he's either got – I don't know, probably NC State, Texas Tech, or John Calipari, who apparently sucks in the tournament now, waiting for him for a trip to the Elite Eight. So now, if I was hey. a one or two, I would I would like this region. I'd be like, I think we've got a clear path without like a huge upset lurking, uh, in my opinion. Let's just get a little crazy here. If Texas Tech beats NC State, and, and I think we think they will. If they beat Kentucky in the round of 32, Coach Cal like gets fired, right? It would be the Sweet 16. No, that'd be the. No, that'd be Marquette, the, Shaka. No, Texas Tech. Oh. If if Kentucky doesn't get to the Sweet 16, I I think Coach Cal is really on the hot seat, like legitimately on the hot seat. Really? Yeah. I think they need I think they need some success here for Coach Cal to have some longevity. They just announced like a big NIL collective that he's heading. So that would be a uh, pretty complicated. Okay. I like Florida though. Maybe he gets I, reassigned to the uh, athletic director's desk or something like uh, they did to Mac Brown. I think Florida sneaky here. They had a really gross injury today. That was hard to watch. Oh, um, I saw that terrible, really hard to see Boise state should absolutely not be in a play in game. Um, shout out to Buzo. I like them a lot, um, but See, I think Florida could beat Marquette. Even I, I like Florida. This is where it's tough, though. Like, I don't know if I'm a if I'm a seven this year and I have to play a ten that just want to play in game. I don't like that. I mean, it feels like every year there's somebody in the play in that makes a deep run. It was UCLA and Mick Cronin a few years ago. I think Jim Beheim did it at Syracuse. Maybe that wasn't a play in, but they made it really far as like an eleven or something. I don't know. I would just not like to be in that spot as a as a seven. And I'll, I'll say the same for Texas when we get to the other side of the bracket. Let's do it. We'll start with TCU up there at the top. Uh, I don't like Purdue. I don't like Matt Painter in the tournament. It seems like Purdue's time to shine here. Uh, if it's ever going to happen, it's going to happen with Zach Eady. But uh, TCU against Utah State in the first round, and then they'll have Purdue in the next round. Uh, what are we thinking? I, I'm kind of with you, man. I know Purdue is a really good team. Whoever wins that 8-9 game is not some pushover. I mean, Utah State was on the five line 72 hours ago, and they somehow wind up an eight. Like, that's not an easy eight. And we've seen TCU go toe-to-toe -to -toe with good teams. Uh, they beat Houston this year. They beat Baylor this year. So – I don't love that if I'm Purdue. Like, even in the round of 32, you don't have some just pushover. And then let's assume it goes chalk on the other side. They get the winner of Kansas versus Gonzaga, two coaches that have been there, rosters that have been there. I mean, it's a tough path just to the um, Elite Eight for them, in my opinion. So, and then, you know, who knows what they have waiting for them on the other side after that. Um, and they tend to just choke against teams that they should beat handily anyway. And we're talking about these tough opponents. Maybe they'll finally prove everybody wrong and, and make a run, but I think that'll be kind of a sexy pick is for like 
Purdue not to go past the Sweet 16 or something. If you're looking for a one to bounce kind of sooner rather than later, I think they'll be a popular pick for that. If we're looking for a three seed to go far, I know Kentucky probably has a pretty good shot. And if you go back to that other slide, um, Illinois, I think BYU, Baylor with Clemson and, and Nevada and Dayton and Arizona. But Creighton on the opposite side of Texas, Virginia, and Tennessee just feels I'm penciling in them pretty far because Texas, not great success in the tournament historically. Rick Barnes, not great success in the tournament historically, even though I think they went to the Sweet 16 last year. Did they? Uh, recently, I think. And then Virginia, I don't think should be in the tournament. I don't know if they even play there. It could be Colorado State. Um, but that's a, that's not exactly murderer's row there with St. Peter's in that bottom four. McNeese is beating Gonzaga. If TCU Bold. doesn't shoot the lights out, they're losing to Utah State and Danny Sprinkle, who should be coaching a major college basketball program. He's a hell of a coach. Um, but yeah, Creighton feels like a they have a really good path to advancing to the second weekend here. And then I guess we'll see what happens with Rick Barnes and Tennessee in the in the tournament because that has historically not been where he's played his or coached his best basketball um, and might be lined up against his former program um, if he does advance. Here's a comment yeah. here that says, does Will Wade get the Louisville job by knocking off Gonzaga? Uh, Scott Drew, Will Wade, we're, uh, Jerome Tang, we're still seeing a bunch of names there for that uh, – Louisville job. Obviously, I don't think it's been going to be Jerome Tang now, but interesting, interesting thought. Will Wade will be a Power Five coach again, Power Six coach again. I think it's only a matter of time. Texas has only been past the first weekend of the NCAA tournament once since George W. Bush was president. It would be really funny if they failed to get past the first weekend of the tournament because the guy that they fired for not getting them past the first weekend of the tournament often enough beat them in the first weekend of the tournament. So fingers crossed that happens because that would just be hilarious. That would be. If they could beat St. Peter's, that would be funny. Yeah. All right, let's uh, head back to some of these. The bracket strength, this is uh, Ken Palm adjusted the top 10 seeds of each region. Uh, if you're looking at a Texas Tech, you know, beneath the top five seeds here, it goes one through five and then Texas Tech, Slightly edging out Nebraska, Colorado, and Florida. Um, A&M and Boise State there as well. And then you have TCU way low on the list. Uh, I, I don't know. Do these make you feel any better or worse about uh, what we're about to do and pick some tournament games? I'm not trying to be funny. Where is NC State on this graphic? You know, I don't see them. It's one through there. ten seeds, so they oh, yeah, are okay. not included. Yeah. I can't read. That's my bad. Um, I think that goes back to what I was saying about Duke maybe being the only team that could challenge Houston in this region. It's very jumbled after that. I mean, like Marquette down to A&M uh, in the south is very – looks like a lot of parity. So that should be fun, I guess. Like compare that to the east where it's very spread out. Um, I don't think it really changes too much in terms of how I'm thinking. Also lend some credence to the to the thought that UConn has the toughest road um, with Auburn, Iowa State, and Illinois up there. Arizona seemingly with the uh, easiest road. North Carolina, the one seed there, but they're even beneath Arizona. Yeah, if you're a one, I think you maybe don't fret too much about where the two and the three are in your region because so much has to happen before that matters anyway. But like if I'm Houston and I'm looking at this and I go, oh, the second best team in our region is a team that is probably waiting for us in the Sweet 16. Like to me, that's not so fun. I guess I'm a little surprised that Arizona is ahead of UNC out west. UNC kind of on par with like some three and four seeds across the board there. I mean, the West certainly seems like it's going to be the 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 uh, the most upsets, and then maybe because there's one 
there's one corner of the bracket that's always chalk. I feel like the Midwest might be the chalk bracket this go around, just based on what we're seeing here. Except for maybe Kansas is lower than Gonzaga, but I think we could pretty well walk through the Midwest if you're going by Ken Palm. I know not it, not everyone does. Yeah. All right, let's look at that uh, that last one again. See if we can find Texas Tech here. It's uh, it's not easy. Oh, Nathan says he couldn't spot Tech in the slide with the trapezoid, and he, he gave me a pointer to do a an L and the laser pointer, but I don't think it works here in the the. Uh, this is great radio. Looking for it. there's OU smack dab in the middle. There's Cincinnati smack dab right beneath Duke. If y'all see where Baylor and Colorado State are right on the bottom yep. edge of the trapezoid, I think there's a corner of a double T behind Colorado State. I think so. There's Michigan State, too. A lot of people say Michigan State shouldn't be in the field, but here they are on the trapezoid of excellence. I don't see NC State, though. I'm trying to think of how they play. Is that Brown there with the bear? That's not them. Maryland, there's Louisville. A and M. I don't see NC State. There's Nebraska dead center. Eastern Washington. There's a lot of non-tournament teams that I wish were uh washed out of this graphic. Maybe I try to find the Travels of Excellence uh with the tournament teams. But I think I really just wanted it to see Tennessee, Auburn, Purdue, Illinois. Um, UConn, Houston's way up there. And then if you have a matchup that's like Arizona, Virginia, potentially, or whatever, Kentucky, Virginia, whatever it is, then you have like some styles clashing and that's where it gets crazy. Wolf towards the bottom right. I don't see a wolf. I think that might be NIUs that they're looking at. Oh, the Saluki right there? The 68 on the Yeah, that's in IU. X-axis. Are they behind UCF? I think Southern Illinois is Salukis. What did I say? You said Salukis. Oh, yeah, that's that's Southern Illinois. That's my bad. But I don't know what Northern Illinois is. Uh, that, we're, we're spending too much time on that. <laughs> I just keep finding Tarleton State. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so there's the bracket. Uh, any other thoughts as we move toward picking some games here? Uh, is there an uh, early favorite that you're going to maybe try to push forward to a final four before you even get started? I'm going to say this. First off, agree or disagree? You can say it. Texas Tech has a legitimate path to the final four. Define legitimate. Like it doesn't take an act of God or twisting all this stuff. I'll lay it out for you. Yeah. You beat the worst 11 seed in the tournament who yeah. you're already favored against. Okay, uh -huh. check. By five and a half. You play a three seed. Um, if you play a 14 seed, even better, but let's assume you get the three sure. against a coach and a team that is historically underachieved in recent years. Okay. Like, it's not that crazy. Let's say you go into that game as a – Five point dog. Nobody's gonna be like, "Oh, how did that happen?" If you beat them, yeah. So you're in the Sweet Sixteen against who knows who. Let's say you get a little bit of help and you don't have to play Marquette and you get a seven or a ten on the other side. Probably gonna be slightly favored in that game. You go through. Let's assume the top of the bracket goes chalk and you get Houston. It's a team that you've played. This will be the third time you play them. Hasn't gone well the first two times. I can acknowledge that. No. Um, is it easy to beat a good team three times in the same season? They say it's not. Yeah. You'd be playing them in Dallas. Uh, who would have more fans of that game, Texas Tech or Houston? I think it would be a wash. I know you want to say Dallas here is a Texas Tech East, but. Okay, I'll, then I'll put it another way. If you could play Houston – well, actually, I'll back up here. If you had yeah. to play any one seed, would you rather it be the third time you're seeing them or the first time you're seeing them? I'd rather play Purdue. That's not what I asked. I'd, would it, you rather... I'd rather it be the first time because of how the first two games went with Houston. 
I think there's a case to be made that you would rather have seen them know what they're going to do on both ends of the floor. Kyle, you've seen the film. Yeah. So, okay. I guess we disagree on that. Let's. Oh, I, I hear you. I respect you. I disagree. <laughs> okay. That's fine. I don't think you're yeah. now How about this one. Eight? Yeah. Good, good path to the elite eight. I agree. Okay. No, I'm not done yet though. Uh, right. If there was any city in the world besides Lubbock where you could play these guys, sure. what city would you choose? Dallas. Okay. Okay. So like, is it that it, to get to the final four, you have to beat a one seed. Is it crazy to think that playing them for the third time in the city, in the arena that you would want to play them in is like that insane? No, I, I think it's a, uh, I think you're trying to say it's a perfect storm to beat Houston and go to an, a, a final four. No, I'm not saying that it's going to be really freaking hard. But if there was an opportunity to do it, this would be the opportunity. I think so. It's better than being the five in Houston's bracket and getting them in the Sweet 16, in my opinion. Money, am I crazy, or am I making some decent points here? Yeah, I guess I'll play devil's advocate and say uh, I think this is a, a tough draw because of kind of style of play. You're going to see a very – if you do end up beating NC State and Kentucky beats Oakland um, – which they're not Oklahoma State, so they should. Um, you're going to play two teams that play very differently. Um, and sometimes that can kind of throw you off depending on how you play the game. NC State is going to play very aggressive defensively, whether that benefits them or not. They're going to switch a lot. They're going to press a lot. They're going to run everything through Burns offensively. And then you're going to go play a Kentucky team who you're essentially going to have to win a track meet against. And so I'd say if you make it out of the first weekend, then maybe the road ahead gets a little bit easier because I do think Florida is sneaky good. Like uh, Marquette has had one of their best players out for a while dealing with an injury. They may have just been resting him, um, but he's been sidelined for the Big East tournament. Um, but I think first weekend will be tough. I, I will say that much. And I, I'm very much approaching it with uh, with caution. Although I've not done all my homework yet and look forward to doing so the next couple of days. So I'm doing some research on if it's really easier to beat a team or harder to beat a team the third time. I think it's not. I think it's just a sports cliche that we say. There's a 538.com article from 2022 that goes in depth. But. Uh, I'm not sinking in the math here as I'm reading through it right now. I'll, I'll send you the link. A lot of this obviously depends on the health of Darion Williams and or Warren Washington. So sure. yeah, absolutely. probably should have started with that. But like, yeah, if you tell me we're tipping off against NC State without either of those guys, then it changes the calculus. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I think you should have both of them available. I don't know how many minutes Darian Williams can play, but I mean, you're not. I don't know. Is is there an opportunity to have a longer lasting injury if Darian Williams plays? I think that's a conversation because you don't have to play again for months uh, after this. So I don't know. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying. I don't want to hurt Darian Williams uh, any more than he has to be hurt. Uh, obviously. So I think there's some questions there to get through. I would not read too much into him being in a boot today, though. Is all I'll say. I think you kind of took a gamble playing him in that BYU game, but if he did roll it and he sprained it, you're you're kind of good for the next hour. Um, and then later that night or the next day, his ankle was probably the size of a grapefruit and it probably hurt like hell to walk on. Yeah. Um, and so you're probably using that for swelling to reduce the pain of him walking on it. Um, but I would not, say oh he's in a walking boot his season is over it, it's very much precautionary in most cases so i would not be burning the world down if you saw that picture and you were very concerned which i think there's reason to be because obviously he's been your best player since february 1st um and one of the best players in the country but would not pull all your hair out quite yet yeah he uh, I, I said that when it happened, I was like, that ankle might hurt worse tomorrow. And they even tell you, like, not untie your shoe and take your shoe off if that happens because it then the swelling just balloons. 
it's almost easier to play through with the adrenaline. And then, yeah, once you hit the showers and wake up the next morning, you're like, oh, I can't run on this. <laughs> um, so it kind of went exactly like that. And I, I really hope he's healthy because he's been so fun to watch and can do it all. And kind of been running a lot through him. Rob, you want me to put out an insane gaucho guarantee? Yes. If Texas Tech doesn't make the final four, I will retire from podcasting. <laughs> no. No, I don't want that. But that's uh that's very bold of you to say. And if I'm lying, you can sue me in court. There you go. Just don't call Barnett Howard and Williams because they'll present a winning case and I don't want to lose in court. BHWLawfirm.com. Learn more about them. They're based here in Fort Worth, but they handle cases all across the state of Texas. Catastrophic injury, criminal defense, you name it. They're one of the only law firms in the state of Texas that is certified for Title IX student litigation. They hope you never need them, but they are in your corner if you do. Barnett Howard and Williams Law Firm, bhwlawfirm.com. All right, let's – oh, now I'm getting texts about saying UT, UT uh, Texas Tech would be a wash fan-wise. Uh, brutal miss putt from Kyle on the 18th of the players to force the playoff. That was a brutal miss. I guess you look like the, uh, the player that missed it. I just saw the miss. I didn't see who missed it. Apparently, it's a Kyle Doppelganger. Uh, Houston has a key injury, too. That didn't matter in the in the Big 12 tournament, by the way. Um, Cincinnati, it looks like hosting USF. He says UCF hosting USF in the NIT. And then he says Cincinnati also hosting USF. So I don't, I don't know what that means. But the NIT tournament's coming out. Uh, St. John's has denied... Uh, involvement in the NIT. Ole Miss has denied involvement in the NIT. Kansas State has doubled down that they want to be in the NIT. So, ah, San Francisco. So UCF and South Florida, Cincinnati hosting San Francisco. Did not know they still had a basketball program. Uh, all right. Let's go together into the great unknown and check out a bracket. Let's start in the top left here. Uh, I'm going to rapid fire some of these because I think they are easier. Uh, we'll go top to bottom and then go over to the right side. Does that sound good to you guys? Yep. Yukon Stetson. Just give me a winner. Huskies. Huskies. All right. Uh, FAU Northwestern. I gotta say, Northwestern's basketball team during the bracket reveal looked like what you thought Northwestern's basketball team would look like. I, I want the Owls here, but I guess we'll we'll go majority vote on all of these. Money. FAU should not be an eight seed, and out of spite, I'm gonna pick Northwestern. Got a good offense. Um, You're saying they're ranked too high because of last year's success. I think so. And Dusty May is already thinking about Morgantown. So I'm when going say, with Northwestern. When you say Northwestern has a good offense, you mean a bunch of guys that can shoot the three? Correct. Look like a bunch of guys that can shoot the three. If you know what I'm saying. And I think you do. We can go Northwestern. Rob, what do Lunch you think? Pill. Lunch pill guys? Yeah. Coach's kid. Cerebral. I think the Big Ten is a tougher conference than the American. I'll say that much. Um... Oh, no. I'm stuck here. Oh, this is great. Hold on. This is this is just fantastic. What are we doing here? How come I can't get off the screen? Northwestern is a is a one point dog on Kim Palm right now. That's it. It's close. Do you know where so that game is being played? I'll roll with Northwestern as well. Is it in? Is it in? Uh... I believe it's Brooklyn. Yeah, I think okay. so. All right, I'm cool with Northwestern. All right, San Diego State UAB five twelves are always the sexy pick. I like the Aztecs. 
Money? Yep. Okay, I won't argue with that. Can you uh, share your Auburn. screen again? Oh, or are you yeah. still stuck? No, I can. Uh, Auburn, Yale. Bruce Pearl, man, magician. A lot of people say that roster's not very good, but Bruce Pearl's just coaching. Auburn, kind of a roller coaster team, in my opinion. If y'all wanna, if y'all wanna go upset, I'm fine with Yale. I think Auburn is obviously the smarter. They're gonna be favored. But if we want to talk ourselves into like some double digit seeds winning, I, I don't hate Yale there. I think we can find some other matchups maybe that fit better than an Auburn Yale. Okay. But what do you think? Yeah, I hate it, but I'm gonna take Auburn. What's the line on this one? Let me check. I'll pull up uh, BPI on all of these so I can okay. we can cross reference. Auburn by thirteen is the yeah. projected Kim Palm right now. Yeah, let's let's take Auburn here. I think. Yeah, I do underdogs have- never win in March. I want to take at least one thirteen here. In the last couple of tournaments, you you'll you'll do well by taking a couple of thirteens, and even a fifteen or two. Uh, BYU Duquesne. Cougars. Cougars. Cougars sweep. Uh, Illinois Moorhead State. TJ Shannon. I'm Dog. I might be hard to to out Illinois here. I think I think they have a good chance. Uh, Washington State Drake. Shout out Sardar Calhoun, but I'm going uh, Wazoo here. Does he play wait, for Drake? Wait, he's still playing. I think that might have been Calhoun. where he transferred from or to. I can't oh, even right. remember at this point. Right. Sardar Calhoun, what a pull! I do want Drake Iowa State. Um, in the second round, interstate rivalry there, but we, but I think Wazoo is a smart pick. What's the what's the line on that Drake Washington State game? Let's see. Ooh, BPI it's fifty fifty, dead even. Oh, it's a one point Washington State favorite game on Kim Palm. It's Pac twelve overrated. I like Washington State, man. They're fun. It's the last game of the day, Pac twelve after dark. Okay, that that edges it for me. Can't say edges anymore. Uh, Iowa State, South Dakota State. I'm assuming we're all uh, in agreement there. Yeah, clones. All right, let's go to the West. North Carolina over, what is this, Howard or Wagner? Yeah, lock it in. Uh, Mississippi State, Michigan State. If we look at the travel load of excellence, Michigan State in a pretty good position here, but a lot of people say they shouldn't be in the tournament. Money is it? Is it Chris Johns or Jans with a soft J? I believe it's Jans. I like the cut of his yib, and I think whether he or Izzo makes it to the next one, we need to we need to pick this game based on who's going to beat Purdue in the round of 32, in my opinion. Well, this is a North Carolina matchup. Never mind then. Got the regions mixed up. <laughs> we just um, picked North Carolina. I mean, death taxes and Izzo in March, but also they – Aren't that good? That's not really been the case since Texas Tech broke them. There is a stat out there though that if you like, as a true freshman, went to go play for Izzo and you stayed through your entire eligibility, he's taken every player to a Final Four. They obviously haven't been to one since 2019, so this would be the last year with a COVID season. Probably not going to happen, but just throwing that out there. I like uh, Chris Jans too. Money, what is your thought here? Yeah, I'll take Mississippi State. They're one point underdogs on Kim Palm right now, but I like them. Okay. They played Auburn tough the other night. 12 5 that I like. Grand Canyon over St. Mary's. What do you guys think? The networks would fall all over themselves for North Carolina, Michigan State, by the way. But, but let's go with Jans. That is true. Okay. Um, St. Mary's Grand Canyon, is that what we're picking? Yeah, you think the refs you think the ref show is gonna show up for Izzo? I don't is, know. is this something stupid like his last tournament? <gasps> Excuse me. <clears throat> I don't think that's been announced. I think yeah. I like the Gales over Grand Canyon. One that, oh the hiccups. Are you gonna die over there? Excuse me, I I just had the 
Ryan Gales or Grand Canyon? I'll go Gales. I think Grand Canyon might have gotten a little concussed after getting pelted with the basketball at the end of their conference championship the other night. That was the funniest fight I have seen in a long time. They are 29-4, and four, though. They don't lose. St. Mary's Except won the West Coast Conference. They lost to Tarleton State, actually, on and Abilene Christian. They did lose to ACU. All right, we'll go to St. Mary's. Uh, Alabama and Nate Oates, uh, Charleston. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Is that majority rules there? You going to argue against that money? No, I want to, but it's a good pick. <laughs> uh, Clemson, New Mexico. I've got my pick here. We've gone chalk quite a bit. Go Lobos. I'm with the Lobos. They are favorites in Vegas and on Kim Palm. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. That's Patino, right? It is, yes. All right. Uh, Baylor Colgate. Baylor's lost as a three seed before recently. Bears. Didn't they? Didn't the coach that broke his leg beat Baylor as a 14 seed? Hunter? I don't, I don't remember that. Fine, we can go Bears. All right. Dayton, Nevada? I'm deferring to money on this one. Whatever money says, I'll go with. I'm going to go Nevada. Balanced team. I think they're top 40 in offense and defensive efficiency. Dayton a little overrated. I don't think they beat a single team this season that's in the field. So I'm going to go Nevada. Show some love to Darion Williams. Especially if the Mountain West is as deep as it has been portrayed, I, I think the Wolfpack are probably battle-tested and ready to go. So I like that pick. All right, now we have Long Beach State and Arizona. Long Beach State, uh, this is the fired coach, right? Believe so, yes. Is he coaching in the big dance? Well, he coached in the in, uh, the conference tournament. I, I'm assuming he rides it out until he's done. Arizona yeah, lost as a two last year, didn't they? Yes, they did. No, no way it happens again, right? No way, right? Arizona's okay. projected to win by 20. Okay. <laughs> hey, Money, do you like the handheld mic? Sometimes. My uh, my mom texted me. I guess she's streaming. And she, she said, I have a headset with a mic if money wants it. Dot, dot, dot. Your compadre. Shout out, Miss Jacobson. So, Y'all live in the same area up there in Collin County, so just let her know. Uh, do you want to finish this left side or you want to come back to it after we do this first round over here? Let's keep picking up since we were just looking at it. Okay. Let's go back to the top. UConn, Northwestern. Huskies. UConn. Yeah, I think I think we can pencil in UConn quite a ways here. San Diego State, Auburn. Versus Pearl Magic. Sure. Auburn. Money? I guess. <laughs> what do you what do you think? What do you what would you pick here? I just I, I'm biased. I don't like watching Auburn. They cry about every single call. Yes, it's, they do. It's terrible. It's so bad. But San Diego State, I think they're top ten in defensive efficiency. Not great offensively, though. They cannot shoot the three, so that'll be an issue. San Diego State, UConn will be a rematch of last year's title game. Let's see if there's any uh oh, no. All right. Yes, it would. Uh, yeah, let's go Auburn here. Uh, BYU, Illinois. We going big pick... or are we going Terrence Shannon? I don't want to pick BYU to go too far because if, if the three isn't falling in one game, they're probably toast. And so I think we need to cut them off sooner rather than later. So give me the Illini. Money, what do you think? I'm going Illinois. Agreed. All right, clean sweep there. That's probably bad news for Illinois. Uh, Iowa State, Washington State. Clones. Yeah. yeah. I, I really like UConn, Iowa State. I don't know if you guys do, but I feel like that's a chalk region. 
I do like Illinois here, though. They seem like they match up well athletically with uh, Iowa State. Thoughts? I'm probably going chalk. Yeah, it's, after watching what the clones did to Houston, it's hard to go against them. It's also hard to go against C.J. Shannon after watching what he did this past week. He had a great week. Uh, UConn, you know what? I'm not calling this, but if somebody's going to have a Kimball Walker run, it could be Terrence Shannon. But I'm fine with chalk here. UConn, Iowa State. Uh, to the final four, well, let's save the final four. Let's save the Elite Eight. Uh, North Carolina, Mississippi State. Give me yawns. Money. Taking the Tar Heels. And I hate it because they have an easy path if they get past this game. Yeah. Because I think they can beat St. Mary's or Alabama pretty easily. Those Actually, either of those games might be easier than this Mississippi State game. I I hate being the deciding factor. Kyle, why why uh, Jans? Just because you like the name? Well, no, I like the cut of his yib, but I think that I think he's a good coach. I think North Carolina is the worst one seed, and I don't want to be too boring going all chalk here. And yeah. so I feel like I don't know round of thirty two, a one versus eight happens about like ten percent of the time. So I feel like it's not too crazy to predict one of those. You don't like Hubert Davis? I didn't say that. You just like Jans more. That game will be a slug fest, though, because both of them are really good defensive teams, and neither of them can shoot the three very well. All right, let's get crazy. I I agree with money, but I uh, also want to get crazy with Kyle. So let's go Mississippi State here. Uh, St. Mary's, Alabama. Alabama. Keith Jackson for you. I'll take out. I don't want to get stuck uh, being the deciding vote anymore. So Alabama, I'll take them. I want the Gales. I want the Gales too. I do not trust Nate Oates. All right. Uh, New Mexico, Baylor. I really want Patino to go on a run. Lobos, give them to me. Money. I'm taking Baylor. <laughs> I guess that's two, two to three. <laughs> I feel like we're going against money too much. He's the basketball guy. Guys, we could make this like the crazy region if we go Lobos here. Like, you, you convince me. The best way to fill out a bracket, though, is by choosing as much chaos as possible. That's true. Never do what you think is going to happen. I will say, if we go back to the uh, Trap Zone of Excellence, Baylor is there. I don't see uh, the Lobos. They are in the was... top right, right next to Kentucky. Oh, that's close enough. Close enough. Matchup, matchup nightmare for uh, for the boys there at Baylor. Oh yeah. All right, now we go to where are we at? Now we go to Nevada, Arizona. Money. Yeah, what the hell? Give me Nevada. Picked him in the first round. We'll we'll pick him again. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. I'll go Arizona. If we're going chaos. Let's go chaos, man. Okay, take Nevada. In Arizona, I they have a new coach this year. Is that true? Or he's he was he there last year too? Sean Miller left two years ago. That's right, because Sean Miller was at uh, was gone. So, yeah. So yeah, this is Tommy Lloyd's third season, I believe. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we're gonna have uh, at least a five here <laughs> going to the final four. I want I want the Gales and the Lobos. I agree, I think. Okay, all right. I'm down. All right, let's go to the other side here. Houston Longwood. Cougars Houston. Longwood. All right. Cougars beat the Longwood. Uh, Nebraska AM. Can Nebraska do it? Be the first time. I love the uh Tama Tama guy. I can't Fred Hoiberg? No, the uh their guard. Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about the coach. No. I do like Horberg too. Over Buzz. Money, what do you think? What's the what's the line on this game? Kim Plum has the Huskers as two point favorites right now. 
I'm going to take Nebraska. Yeah, I don't trust the Aggies in crunch time. Me neither. And Tech beat them by 30. So, uh, Wisconsin, James Madison. This is, as referenced, the Pardon My Take Bowl. If you know, you know. Uh, there's going to be a 512 on the board we need to take, but I don't know if it's this one. So, the Badgers are only four and a half point favorites in Vegas. Uh, two to one shot to win it on BPI. Yeah. I don't think this is a bad 12 over five spot. James Madison only lost three times this year. They've got winning DNA. If we're taking one 12 five, is it McNeese Gonzaga or is it Wisconsin James Madison? We could take both. If we there's, yeah. There's actually not a rule saying you only have to take one. So take both. So we're split here. Money. What do you say? Let's go crazy. Let's put JMU. All right. James Madison, man, a lot of success in their programs this year. Their, their numbers, not great. <laughs> Wisconsin, though, I would never bet on Wisconsin in football again. So I'm, I might as well take that into basketball as well. James Madison was ranked 19th in the country in early January, for whatever that's worth. So is Oklahoma. Uh, Duke, Vermont. Dukies. Agreed. Uh, Texas Tech, NC State. I don't think it's a homer pick at this point. You're favored. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kentucky, Oakland. Kentucky. Uh, Money already said he loves Florida. Are we taking Florida here? After all my spiel about how dangerous play-in teams are, I kind of want the winner of the 10 play-in, but I also don't want to – I don't know ball like Money does. So if he says Florida, then we can go Florida. Yeah. We also no matter, like Boise State, so. Yeah, no matter who wins that game, it'll be a really fun first-round game, maybe the best of the first weekend. But I think Florida and their offense gets it done. Okay. Uh, Marquette and Western Kentucky? Yeah, give me Shaka. Shaka. Purdue, Grambling, Montana State. Purdue. Utah State, TCU. Tough. We've been pretty high on the Mountain West to this point. Yes, we have. I don't know if I can trust the Frogs. I don't know, man. What's the Ken Palm line on this one? TCU is two point favorites. I'll ride with the favorite. Lots of hand ringing going on here. Kyle, money. What? What are you taking here? I thought we picked TCU. Oh, are we all taking them? I knew I did. I just didn't want to be the deciding vote there. No, yeah, I think Utah State. Oh. But I'm outnumbered, so it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm uh yeah, let's go TCU, emotional hedge. All right. Well, Kyle, you'd be the deciding vote there if, if money's Utah State. Uh TCU pretty big favorite on BPI, like a seventy two percent chance to win. All right, McNeese Gonzaga. I love Will Wade here. I hate Mark Few. This is the worst Gonzaga team in a decade. I like the five twelve here. What do you guys think? Give me McNeese. What do you think the, the spread is on Ken Palm for this right now? Gonzaga minus three and a half. It's minus six, but so this is this is McNeese. Yeah. Against Gonzaga. John Moran isn't walking through that door. He went to Marquette. He went to Murray State. He went to Murray State. Oh, <laughs> I actually thought he went to McNeese. I knew he didn't go to Marquette. We were both wrong. All these blue and gold teams with an M. Uh, okay, here's Marquette. Uh, Kansas at the four seed against Samford. I'm guessing Dickinson's back. I don't know about McCuller. Samford? Money, correct me if I'm wrong. Sanford, I think, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. And that is now, Kansas' weak point. You can argue, like, 
maybe they weren't playing the best competition, but the three point line is the same distance from the rim in every conference, every arena. If you would have told me like, hey, they're pace this or they're rebounding that, but three point shooting to me translates. We need a mod to block Matt as bear, by the way, off Twitter. Why? What's he doing? It says this is Texas Tech's baseball show. What are the recent results? <laughs> Baylor fans, I'm sure, discovered they have a baseball team this weekend. Good for them. Yeah. I'm going Sam- to lose to Colgate. Samford is eighth in the country in three point percentage. Kansas's defense is 168th in three point percentage. K- Kansas sucks. Kansas has been bad for like six weeks. Yeah, what's the line here? Give me Samford. I don't care what the line is. It's Kansas minus seven and a half in Vegas. That's not that crazy. Seven and a half. Kim Palm has it at seven, too. So the analytics are right there with it. Samford. Kansas sucks. All right, I'll take Kansas. What do you think, Money? I'll take Kansas. Guys, guys. (laughs) I can't do it, man. They suck. I know. And now you'll have them against a 12. We have Kansas in the Sweet 16. They're losing to McNeese. Yeah, we're taking McNeese. Oh, my gosh. McNeese, TCU in the Sweet 16. John Moran is not walking through that door, okay? Uh, South Carolina, Oregon. A lot of people like South Carolina. Uh, Sure. Oregon shouldn't be in the tournament. I know they have to be, but. Uh, Creighton, Akron. Creighton. She's a kid from Akron, man. Money? Yeah, Creighton. Uh, Texas, Virginia, we'll say. Could be Colorado State, though. I want them to lose in the first round so bad, but I also want them to lose to Rick Barnes so bad. We can go with whatever y'all want. I I almost want to say emotional hedge to have them win so they can lose to Rick Barnes, but if they lose in the first round, I'm not going to be sad. I'm okay with manufacturing that. Tennessee in the uh, trap zone of excellence, by the way. I don't see Texas. McNeese great Dwayne Wade not walking through that door. He went to Marquette, by the way, Rob. Also, also Marquette, yeah. I knew it was an M team. <laughs> All right. I, I agree. So we're taking Tennessee here? Yeah. And I guess we'll go from the bottom. We're taking Tennessee here. Yeah. Uh, South Carolina, Creighton? Creighton. Money? Yeah, Creighton. McNeese, Kansas. I hate you guys so much. I'm taking McNeese. Same. Uh, TCU, Purdue. Uh, TCU, fast break athletic. I, I think they can get around uh, the Zach Eady problem. I, I don't know, but Purdue's going to lose. They're not going to make it to the Final Four. I mean, you'll have McNeese standing in their way if y'all don't pick TCU right here because y'all wouldn't go with me on Samford. So. But it would have been Samford standing in their way. What does that matter? And they would have still been shooting 48% from three, and like <laughs> they're not going to drive on Zach Eady if they do. They'll just shoot 55 threes and win the game. What is McNeese's three-point percentage? Not as good as Samford's. We taking Purdue here? Or TCU? Give me the Frogs. McNeese is seventh in the country. Oh, That's there the you go, Kyle. Time. It's even better. Suck it, Sanford. I'll take Purdue. So, okay. Money, whatever you think here. I'm going Purdue, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go back to the top. Houston, Nebraska. Yes. James Madison, Duke. I feel like this has happened before. Isn't James Madison the Dukes? This is Duke versus the Dukes. I tell you, to watch them duke it out. It's the second worst joke you've told today. Give me give me Duke. I agree. Uh, Tech, Tech, Kentucky? I just spotted something fun. Uh, yeah, Tech. Money? Kentucky. All right, I'm going to be a homer. I want Coach Cal to get fired. Marquette, Florida. I like Marquette. Don't trust him. Give me Todd Golden and Florida Gators. All right, money. Uh, Kyle, I mean. 
Um, dang. Can't wait for the Big East documentary, Fab Five. Uh, I don't care. I'll go with whatever y'all want on this one. I'm not very opinionated. We're we're split. Um, money took Florida. If you want to side with money, I'm not sure Florida's getting out of that. Uh, the first round. So give me Marquette just in, as a hedge in case Florida doesn't make it that far. Good. I wanted Shaka. Texas Tech owns Shaka. All right, Houston Duke. Um, Duke, we're going to beat Kentucky and Duke in the same tournament, by the way, guys, just FYI. I would take Houston money. I'm definitely going Houston. Okay. Uh, Texas Tech Marquette. Tech. Kyle's dream in Dallas. (laughs) It's not going to happen. All right. Uh, Purdue McNeese. We're going off the rails here. Duke is top 26 in both Kim Palm offense and defense. Is that the uh, threshold for a national champion? Uh, I don't know what it is. There's top something there that like – Top 44 or something? Top 26 is even better. Duke in the trapezoid of uh, excellence. But uh, so it's Houston. Y'all had a shot to beat Kentucky and Duke in the same NCAA tournament, and y'all said no thanks, just FYI. And Houston. I want that out there. Houston. Just because we're picking this doesn't mean it's going to happen. Hakeem, Hakeem Olajuwon isn't walking through that door. I want to beat the big brands. All right. Purdue McNeese. Let's keep on track here. I wanted like none of these four teams in this round. I just. <laughs> y'all pick whoever. McNeese can shoot, but they are short, which is unfortunate because that means Purdue's probably taking this one. In the matchup that will most definitely be happening in real life, Purdue is Matt Painter's in the year? Sweet Sixteen. All right, Matt Painter's losing to either Creighton or Tennessee. What's the best matchup for to beat Purdue here? Give me Dougie Fresh and Creighton. Money. I'll take Creighton. I think Tennessee played Purdue this season and lost, so I'll yeah. take Creighton. All right, so let's uh, let's go back to the top. UConn, Iowa State for a chance at the Final Four. Can UConn go back to back? That's a lot of pressure. I'm leading Iowa State here. Yeah, give I me like the clones. I like Iowa State too. Okay, clean sweep. St. Mary's, New Mexico, Patino and Otts. Match made in heaven. I like both the Gales and the Lobos. I'm not sure. You know what would be funny? Is if a West Coast Conference team finally won a national championship and it wasn't Gonzaga. That would be funny. That would be hilarious. What did you see? Or You said you found something fun earlier, and then we blew right past you, Kyle. No, it was the opportunity to beat Kentucky and Duke in the same NCAA tournament. Okay. But we we throttled that for you. Yeah, y'all ruined it. No worries. Uh, I think we're on the opposite sides here. Money, if you want to take a pick. Give me New Mexico. This was the chaos bracket. Their metrics are very similar. All right, Houston, Texas Tech. It's hard Tech. to beat a team three times. <laughs> Told y'all, final four. In Dallas. Y'all think they're beating us in front of like 60,000 tech fans in uh, American Airlines Center? How many people that holds? I don't think so. I'll take Houston for a third time. Yeah, I'm going Cougars. Y'all suck. I had some pause there. Now, Creighton. Are we taking Creighton? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Purdue should have been out like three rounds ago. What are we, what are we looking at here? Man, we have an opportunity – to beat Duke, Kentucky, and Creighton in the same bracket, guys. Iowa State, Creighton, give me an all Midwest matchup. That would be that would be insane. Give me I, that. Really, I filled out a bracket earlier that was Houston, Iowa State in the finals, so I don't really want to do that twice. Same. That's my parlay Picador's bracket right now. So we're going to Creighton, Iowa State for the vibes. Why not? I don't want Houston in the national championship game. Do you know what, Money? This is just for fun. 
We are the Gambling Gouges of Texas Tech Podcast. You're, you're talking a lot of sense here, Kyle, with the Dallas stuff. They're not beating us in Dallas, guys. Money. My nephew this year got beat three times by the same wrestler and then was, was in an opportunity to beat him for a state championship. You know what he did? He beat him. He beat him, Money. Hollywood scripts do come true. <laughs> Now do we have a, a rematch of Iowa State and Texas Tech? Or do we go full chaos and say Texas Tech, New Mexico? That's the question. Is there another Patino in the national championship game? Or does the does the uh, the Bucks stop here in Phoenix and Creighton, Creighton, Iowa State make it? Yeah, I think just so people know I'm being objective and not just picking tech every round. I think I think the clock strikes midnight in Phoenix and we lose a tough one to Creighton. Man. 81 to 79. Wow. So give me Creighton and Iowa State. What are you down with that? I'll take it. I think we have a big 12 champion. Yes, that's what I would pick. Clones. Same. Not that every man of whiner stuff. Not that that's catching on. Uh, score prediction. Kyle, give me Iowa State score. Money, give me Creighton score. 69. 62. Sweet. Finish. All right. We can uh, share the bracket via X. So everyone can see it. Now, before you share that, I just want to get out ahead of some stuff that might surface on social media. Some Iowa State brethren on the other side of the Cycloneers relationship out in Morgantown might reference something alluded to as the Gauchos curse from last year. I want to assure Iowa State fans that is not real and that you guys are going to win the national championship, which it, it we just ran through every team, every game. Well, Looks good to us. To be fair, we picked West Virginia first. Right. And then – That's what I'm saying. The West I Virginia fans lost. are going to tell them that, that we cursed West Virginia last year. And I'm, I would say I, also lost. Yeah. So, we didn't pick them last year and they lost anyway. So. We're making amends for it. Yeah. We are making amends. I'm glad – I'll say this too, Rob. And I'm wearing purple and lavender right now. Say it. Boy, am I glad we didn't go with Kansas State. I would have regretted that. Even with the Elite Eight run, like that part would have been cool. We would have been bandwagoners for that. But what has transpired with Jerome Tang and that fan base over the last 12 months, I want no part of. I'm out. I would rather lose in the first round with our friends in Morgantown than bandwagon to the Elite Eight with every man a whiner, as you call them. Not that that's spreading anywhere else. It's not. So I've not seen the NIT bracket, but uh, Shanjay Raja says, I can't believe the NIT told mid-major schools to go to hell only for mediocre high-major programs to literally tell them they'd rather pick it up and go home to play in their tournament. So apparently there's some drama here in the NIT. Uh, Kansas State facing Iowa in the first round. I'm looking for the whole bracket here. This is Jerome Tang in the NIT is a good fit, in my opinion. He's going to take it seriously. You can't read that. This is not that it matters. I'll just try to read some of them for you. Uh, Seton Hall, St. Joseph's, LSU, North Texas, Providence, Boston College. Uh, Princeton, UNLV, Wake Forest, Appalachian State, Georgia, 17 and 16, Georgia playing 16 and 17, Xavier. What a hell of a matchup that is. What are we doing? Virginia Tech, Richmond, Ohio State, Cornell. Ohio State, I'm putting them in the final four of the NIT. Indiana State, SMU. You know what it is? Ohio State, Indiana State Championship of the NIT. That's what it is. Uh, Cincinnati, San Francisco. 
Villanova VCU, that's hilarious for a multitude of reasons. UCF South Florida, Iowa, Kansas State, Utah, UC Irvine. So UCF and Kansas State potentially there in the quarterfinals, uh, matching up with Cincinnati in the semifinals, potentially there. In the NIT, Joel says he stepped away for a second. Is this assuming Tech has both guys back? Yes, if Texas Tech in the Final Four, uh, both guys are definitely back, <laughs> which is totally going to happen. Totally. Uh, Dan Daniel said, "I wish some. I wish Keegan was wrestling someone from Houston to decide that potential game. It has to be better odds. I, I bet it would be." Uh, all right. I think that's it. There were some NCAA tournament Matador mailbag, Matador Transit mailbag questions. Unless there's uh, something else that happened this weekend you guys want to discuss. I don't think anything else happened this weekend that we want to get into. My mother taught me if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And so those are my thoughts on Texas Tech baseball for this week's podcast. I will definitely have some thoughts with Carson Robinson tomorrow on the Rob Rowe show, though. We're not as nice. Overreaction Monday. Overreaction Monday. Uh, is Joe Lenardi. Now this is not me. This is not me saying this. This is a question in the mailbag. You can see more questions in the mailbag by going to patreon.com slash gambling gauchos where we answer these every Wednesday night. Uh, is Joe Lenardi B word made? for sending a good night tweet in March. A lot of people thought that that was uh, negative on Joe Lenardi. He can't wait for I mean, the bracket's out. He, he takes vacation during the tournament. He doesn't watch basketball. He doesn't care. He'll be back on the uh, tournament scene, the bracket scene. Uh, what is it? April, the first Tuesday in April. Uh, chances we see both D5 and Warren Washington in the NCAA tournament. Hi. Yeah, 97%. Did anybody answer the question about Joe Lenardi? I think we all just shook our heads and said yes. I mean, is this or is this not March? Yeah, we sleep in May, right? We sleep in May. Um, There's a Kyle Orton question here. Regarding mid and low seeds winning conference tournaments, do you think that speaks to the relative strength or weakness of a conference? Examples, 10 seed NC State was the ACC champ. Six seed New Mexico was the Mountain West champ. Six seed was an A-10 champ. Five seed Big Sky, Big South champs. Uh, and then a question for money. Which mid-major team do you think has the best shot at making a run in the tournament? I mean, I guess New Mexico, McNeese State, one of those two. Yeah, yeah. probably one of those two. New Mexico has a much better roster. And a much better resume in terms of metrics, though. So I'd probably side with the, the Patino family on that one. In your personal bracket, do you also have New Mexico going pretty good? I think I have them winning in the first round. I do not have, know how far I have them going, though. Okay. Uh, let's see. There were some more basketball questions. Who's your favorite Texas Tech basketball role player of the last decade? A good question. You know what? We'll do that Wednesday because I think we can flush that one out a little bit. Uh, if you could only get one for the tournament, would you rather have Warren Washington or Darian Williams? Darian Williams. Oh. For sure. I, I think I agree. Healthy Darian Williams, yeah. This matchup makes it tough just because Burns is so big, and I think you want some size to at least put some resistance on him. But in terms of overall production, like literally Darion Williams has been one of the best players in the country for the last month. That's very hard to do. And then earlier tonight, Don Williams told Maddie to make friends after he said he didn't want to play his eight person uh, tournament game. Uh, has Don Williams ever cooked harder than when he told Maddie to make friends is the question. Back-to-back -back weeks, Don makes it on the pod. He's on a tear right now. He is on a heater. 
Uh, last question, and really, you know what? I should do this um, not on this podcast. I should do this uh, behind a paywall because I might get in trouble here. Uh, but the question is, how much money would you pay for this T-shirt? Uh, Zero dollars. And I don't know if somebody from Texas Tech designed this or if Under Armour put this out. Uh, if Under Armour designed this, they are making fun of you. And they're saying, you guys left us. Good luck with Adidas. This is the worst shirt we've ever made. Uh, we're not putting any effort into you. This is the last time we'll ever do anything for you. Here's a big double T on your ass. Uh, good luck. I mean, it's the worst shirt I've ever seen. The front is like not terrible. I mean, it's maybe not the design I would go for, but you're absolutely right. What is this text for ants? It's tiny. That's the smallest double T I've ever seen. And that's the biggest double T I've ever seen. What are they doing? When you need the top of the double T to go from like one hip to the other. And bad news for the 72-year-old man that tucks his shirt in. <laughs> the bottom of that double T is going to be in the in the pants. And it's long sleeve. What are we doing? And if some Texas Tech person made this, you know, it's not that bad. But if Under Armour put this forward, that is brutal. That is brutal. That's It's bad. It's a bad shirt. It's I can't shirt. wait for the Mahomes stuff to drop. The the apparel, I mean. There was some, uh, there was some, there's some negativity on the NC State uniforms, which are Adidas, and the Nebraska uniforms, which are Adidas, uh, back to back. To me, basketball uniforms just win. I don't think you're partnering with Adidas to get with the basketball uniforms. <laughs> I, I don't care what you're wearing. I, 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 I know we joke about that a lot, but in basketball, literally just win. I don't care what you're wearing. I still just don't think people have wrapped their minds around this. That when you're affiliated with the greatest player to ever play the game, like who cares if you like the stripes or the font? It's Patrick F. and Mahomes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Hey, quick shout out to a stranger. Um, I've been meaning to do this for several weeks on the podcast, but if you and I met in a crosswalk in downtown Fort Worth like three or four weeks ago. And we didn't have time to like actually stop and chat and get to know each other because we were in the middle of the road. Let me know who you are. I just want to know what your name is and maybe we'll cross paths again, especially if you work in downtown Fort Worth. I'm through that intersection every single day. If that happened. I, I don't know if I told you all this, but this guy was crossing the street, like opposite direction from me. And he was like, Kyle and, I didn't recognize him and I felt really bad at first because I'm terrible with names. And so my first thought is like, I know this guy through work or something like I'm supposed to know who this is and I don't. And he was like, I was just listening to y'all's podcast. I was like, oh, okay. So that made me feel a little, a little bit better that like it was somebody I hadn't met before. But I didn't have time to stop and do what I usually do, which is like get their name, ask them what they do for a living, all that stuff. So anyway, if you're the stranger I met at the crosswalk, let me know because it, it's been eating at me that I don't actually know your name and, and your life story. Hashtag misconnections. Yeah. Uh, if you made it to the 90 minute mark after we almost put Samford ahead of Kansas, you, you've got to take that guy out to launch. I, I will. I will. Like if you work in downtown Fort Worth, hopefully he wasn't just there for like a one off. I'll, I'll go buy you lunch at Jake's or, or wherever you want to go. Um, Cause yeah, I love talking ball with tech fans. Uh, for what it's worth. K Ford. Well, I don't know that does a lot of basketball stuff. I see him in the college football world quite a bit. Hey, before you do that, yeah. there's actually a couple other misconnections while I'm doing this. Can I just shout out a couple other people? Shoot them out, man. Um, this was a long time ago. I hope these people are still listening. Um, I think my mother-in-law was at the post office Yeah. and was wearing a Gaucho's shirt. Yeah. And somebody at the post office recognizes it and was like, my mother-in-law texted me. She was like, you're so famous. I was like, not really. But if you were that person who saw like a six foot two woman in the post office wearing a gaucho shirt, I want to know who you are. And then the third one, um, I know this guy who works at a barbecue joint in Tarrant County. It's called David's. 
he was wearing a gaucho's hat. I think he was delivering barbecue to somebody. I don't know if it was at their house or their place of business, but the guy he was delivering barbecue to saw his hat and was like, Hey, do you, you know, do you listen to the gauchos? And so another listener. So if you had barbecue delivered to you from David's, this was maybe like four to six months ago. I also want to know who you are. And I hate that I forgot to like call these out at the time. Cause I'm sure people like forgot or, you know, maybe they listen to like one out of every three or four episodes and they might not hear this, but it just eats at me when other people meet listeners and I can't connect the dots. So anyway, all right. What does K Ford have to say? Uh, Texas tech, a 65% chance to get to the second round. Uh, obviously that matches up with NC state's 35% chance to get to the second round, uh, but a 31% chance to get to the sweet 16. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. A 14% chance to get to the elite eight. A 3% chance to get to the Final Four. A 3% chance would be better than Florida. And then right behind Wisconsin's 4% chance, Kentucky's 8% chance, Marquette's 11, Duke's 13, Houston has a 52% chance. Uh, according to K Ford to get to the Final Four, 35% chance to get to the National Championship game, 22% to get to the winner's circle, which is by far the largest of all of the teams. That 14% to get to the Elite elite Eight isn't a huge number, but that's not terrible either. That's like one in seven. I mean, that's close-ish to rolling the dice and it landing on one. Yeah, Um, and that's that's, uh, Houston 65%, Duke 21%, because obviously they're matched up with Houston there. Marquette, Kentucky, 34-28, and then a better a better chance than Florida and Wisconsin. Actually, let's do it this way. Um, Money, can you look up our team's three-point shooting percentage, like individual players, quickly, or is that too much? No, I can pull it up. Because if you can find a 38% three-point shooter, which I think is like Chance McMillan, 14% to make the Elite Eight is like Chance McMillan making two threes in a row. Which if he did that, nobody'd be like, "How did that happen?" Like, I mean, yeah, he's heating up, but nobody's like, "How did that guy make two in a row?" Just to put it into perspective, chance making two threes in a row is basically our odds of going to the elite eight if he's at thirty eight percent, which I think he is. He is at thirty nine point six. Okay. The only guys with higher are Darion Williams forty six point seven, Kerwin at forty seven percent. God dang, Darion Williams shoots forty six from three. Dog. I didn't realize it was that high. Holy cow. Not as much volume, but right. he's efficient. Jeez. All right, yeah, we're going to the final four. Nathan says, you guys couldn't pay me to wear that shirt. It has to be Under Armour. I don't think there's any possible way Tech lets that be the official shirt. I, I don't know. I, it's odd. I would like to see other Under Armour schools. Did any other Under Armour school make the tournament? Is UCLA in the field? No. I think is Auburn a Under Armour school? Auburn. I need to look at Auburn's tournament shirt. If there's a big war eagle on the ass, I'll I'll take it back. But otherwise, it's a bad shirt. <laughs> Sorry. Very particular. Uh all right. Does Maddie like the shirt? Am I am I trashing Maddie? Did she make the shirt? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, Maddie. If she made it. That'd be really bad for you, Rob. <laughs> I don't think she's in graphic design, though. I think she's in like healthcare. Yeah, I don't think she's. Uh... Yeah. Oh, Mario. Or she like bought one for like all of her friends and family, though. It was like, yeah. this is the greatest shirt I've ever seen. My bad. And you're just sitting there like, if you buy this shirt, you're a tasteless piece of. It's a great. It's a great shirt. I've never seen a better shirt. We'll win because of that shirt. Is the team going to be wearing that shirt? Not, that's what I was going to say. It kind of feels like one of the generic warm-ups. If Tech wears that as a warm-up, I don't – you're not going to win. It's right, just by 12. If we're wearing that, we might not be Final Four bound, guys. I mean, you just you can't show up to the gym looking like that and expect to win. No. Let, let me just go to Auburn basketball real quick. <laughs> See if they've posted – was that a direct – was that it? No, they haven't tweeted a shirt out. 
Hey, quick preview of Wednesday's episode. Obviously, it'll be a NC State preview, pretty heavy. Also going to drop some uh, NFL free agency, Kansas City Chiefs specifically, scenarios and, and thoughts on y'all that I, I think will make for some interesting conversation. We're going to have some some Rasheed Rice and Hollywood Brown discourse. That might be done by the time we get to Wednesday. The The Auburn Twitter handle is just tweeting out SEC championship photos, so we're not the same. That's all I got. That's all I got. Final thoughts? Um, no. If I saw you in the crosswalk in downtown Fort Worth, please DM us. That's all. Yeah. My final thought as a former graphic designer is an apology to the graphic designer that made that shirt. I shouldn't have gone so hard on you. That's my bad. Uh, you're, you're just making what you need to make, man. You're just cashing checks. Under Armour, though, whoever put that out. <laughs> that guy had to go through an editor. And a, an approval system, right? Some some marketing director was like, yeah, this is heat. Cook. It's giving. Some 22-year-old production manager was like, this this is great. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I'm cooking everybody now. Or like you said, Rob, it's just like they're mad at us for switching to Adidas. And they're like, here's the worst design we've ever come up with. That's got to be it. That, that has to be it. On your way out. That's what I'm landing with. All right. 1,500, you uh, beautiful people stayed this long, so we'll uh, we'll catch you on the next side. All right. See you all Wednesday. Patreon.com slash Gambling Gauchos. Love you all.